May I introduce you to Mr. Robinson in that empty seat sitting beside them? Here's my Mr. Man Jones, the stolid one. Come along now, off you go. Empty does it. Driving for him means concentrating really hard. Well, you can see it, the way his hands grip that wheel. Can we let go for just one moment to get up into third, do you think? Yeah. Now into top, Pat. Hold your breath. This is quite a decision. Speeds like this, you can't chance a thing. I probably didn't really need to mention it to you, but of course he's a middle-of-the-road man, too. He pays his road tax and he owns the road. That's my Mr. Jones for you. Ah, now here's my favorite mini-driver, my charming Mrs. Smythe. Now, don't get flustered, dear, with a little problem like this. It'll all work out. She's still not quite sure of all the knobs and pedals, you see. It often takes women longer to get the hang of a machine. Her really this time isn't jogging about here. It'll be when she thinks she can drive without thinking. Yes, well, here's the third one I was telling you about. Young Mr. Robinson. Of course, really, he has quite a natural gift for driving. But a bit too showy for me. Already he thinks he's on a racetrack drifting around a roundabout. Yes, that's Robinson, all right. Overconfidence will come to each of them far too soon. It happens to all of us. We know all the answers. Nobody can tell us anything. You know, I've often wished I could meet my pupils again, a year later, when the newness of driving has rubbed off, to watch them without being seen, perhaps even to slip back again into that empty seat. The first thing, of course, would be to take a look at their cars. You can tell a lot about a driver just by seeing how he keeps his car. A clean windscreen. Yes, that's sensible. How about these back tires? Underinflated. Asking for broken walls and a burst. Asking for bad cornering and excessive wear. What must they be like when his whole family's aboard, if this is a sample? I wonder what his brakes are like. Good grief. Handbrake on the last notch. Footbrake down to the floor. One of these days, this car will just go straight on instead of stopping. And what about the Jones family then? And how about my dear Mrs. Smythe? Shopping again, do you think? I suppose so, and very nice too. Perfect little car she's got for that. My goodness, though, she's in for some trouble if she doesn't watch out. Just look at the wear on that tread. Looks as though the wheel's taken quite a bashing sometime or other, too. I have to watch it. The steering's a bit odd, I'm afraid. Really? Oh, heavens, yes. But I'll have to have it done when I can spare the car for a moment. Oh, Mrs. Smythe. Those could be your famous last words. The Robinson car. And he's checking his lights. That's good. But I've got a feeling that he's really just checking that that side light still comes on when you bang it. Yes, I thought so. And what's he doing now, I wonder? Oh, I see. Fitting up a dazzling new spotlight. To the back. Isn't it marvelous? That side light of his could go out any time. Oncoming traffic could misjudge the width of his car. A crash. And here he is worrying about rear spotlights. You may think these are little things, but they all spell danger. The pilot of an aeroplane goes through cockpit drill before every flight. You are the pilot of your car, and you'll meet a great many more hazards in a day than he's likely to. Apart from this, what sort of motorists have these three become? Well, here's the stolid Mr. Jones just starting off for an afternoon's drive with the family. Mrs. Jones doing some serious map reading. And dear little Alicia telling a story to Joan and Jonathan. Jones, the father, grimly concentrates. Slow and steady is my motto, in the face of all hazards.
Really, you know, there's only one thought in his head. Middle of the road and never mind anyone else. Just take a look at what he makes other people do. If anyone wants to pass, and goodness knows at his speed that means most people, then they've got to dodge the oncoming traffic and go right over onto the wrong side of the road to get by. To our Mr. Jones, it's simply a matter of being their funeral, not his. Until there's a problem that even he can't just leave for others to worry about. The problem of stopping at traffic lights. Ah, yes. I know what he'll do now. Still stalling when you start off, Mr. Jones? Ah, good. This is Smythe again. A bit fed up about the lights being red at the moment. And there's that same friend of hers. Wonder who they're going to see who needs so much dolling up for. Mrs. Smythe certainly can handle that little car now. And she's forgotten most of the road craft I ever taught her. Coming up to this T-junction, you wouldn't know which way she's going, would you? Take two guesses and one's sure to be right. Look at the little dears, chatting away. Never a traffic thought in the world. But just one small point, Mrs. Smythe. Your mirror is still in the friend's nose powdering position, you know. Yes, naughty girl. Here comes my least favorite driver, Robinson. The man who'll show you any smart little bit of driving you want to name. Ever tried overtaking two passing cars on a bend on a fast road? He always does, of course. Ever driven over as big a patch of hazard lines as you can find? Yes, he does it as a matter of course. Have you practiced cutting in in front of other people lately? Robinson's the one to show you how. One way and another, my ex-pupils seem to have forgotten most of what I've taught them. Of course, the mechanical side of driving doesn't fuss them any longer. But that's not driving. That's just getting around and hoping for the best. I wish I could bring them here to see how cars should be driven. Take a look at these people. They're no different from the ones I teach. But when they've finished with them here, they're going to be some of the best and safest drivers in the world. And where's here? A police driving school where driving has been reduced to an art, or to an exact science, if you prefer it. Like firemen and ambulance men, they go out on urgent calls, driving at the limits of safety on the same roads that we use. And all we do is provide the accidents. So many more blameworthy accidents than the police. So what is the answer? We're all darn sure we're good drivers. Then why the accidents? One reason is lack of car maintenance. Good enough is not good enough for the police. No car is allowed on the road unless it is 100% efficient. Tire treads are examined and pressures checked. That's one risk reduced to a minimum. Most cars nowadays have hydraulic brakes. If there's not enough brake fluid or there's a leak in the piping, you'll put your foot on the pedal and you won't stop. Check them. And your handbrake. Before that holiday jaunt, and you may well save your life. Lights, particularly the rear lights, brake lights, and traffic indicators. The police automatically check before every journey. Those ruby lights in your car's tail are far too important to protection to be left to chance. A walk around your car at a filling station doesn't even waste time. Another risk taken care of. All simple, all essential, and all, as the police drivers know, cutting down the chance of an accident even before taking to the road. And the second lesson. Police drivers are taught the correct driving position and told to stick to it. Careless habits are stamped on at once. Careless habits. We've all got them. Careless Mrs. Smythe for the all-time driving demonstration. Very clever, I know. 
But what chance would she have in even the slightest crisis? Careless Robinson. He would find himself in this position, wouldn't he? Yes, I'd noticed before that this was how Alicia liked to help drive. Oh, Careless Violet. Jones. Any one of these faults would send a police driver back to the beat at once. But what about actual driving? Well, here's the police driver's manual. Its title, Road Craft, is apt. Good driving is a craft. And anyone who wants to practice it should get this book. It's all here. When I was out with a police driver friend of mine, I asked him, what does it mean when they say, concentration is the keystone of all good driving? Well, that sounds fine, but what do you concentrate on? Car control, sir. We've worked out a scheme where you can't go wrong once it's been drummed into you. Car control. And that's what you're doing now? That's right, sir. It boils down to three things, really. Your car must always be in the right place on the road, travelling at the right speed, and the right gear engaged. Sounds reasonable. Looks easy the way you do it. Let's see you turn right at the next crossing. Mirror. First I'll see whether it's all clear behind. Next I'll signal that I'm moving out to the right. Now I'm travelling on the right place on the road. Next I'll give a slow down signal. Supplement my turn right signal with the indicator. Now I'm travelling at the right speed. The road ahead is clear, so it looks if like I can get round without stopping, so I slip her into first gear. My intentions are clear to the vehicles coming up behind. And I'm away on my new course. Simple. And that routine takes care of every hazard. Every hazard, providing you use your mirror and signal your intentions in good time to the lads behind. But how do you judge the right time to start altering course? Road observation, we call it at the school, and thinking ahead. We're very hot on that, reading the road. We make them do it aloud. Aloud? It's good training. Like to hear a spot. Sure, go ahead. Right. Mirror, nothing behind me. Course into the near side of the road as near as I can, watching this man get into his car. Into first gear, a quick look to the right, and I can see the road to the right is clear. Clear to the left, clear to the right again. And there's cars parked on the other side of the road here, coming to another T-junction, into second gear. I intend to turn left, watching this man on the left, mirror, nothing behind me. Keeping well into the near side because of this dairy vehicle, into first gear. Plenty of pedestrians abound here, I see, quite a busy road. Looking to the right now, and it's clear to the right. Clear to the left, clear to the right again. Cars parked on the side of the road, broken white line in the centre of the road, into second gear, pedestrian crossing, clear to the right, I can't see to the left, yes, there's a man on the left, mirror, nothing behind me, yes, he's on the crossing, a slow down signals allow him to know I'm going to stop, no need for the handbrake, into first gear, well ahead of me I see stationary vehicles just moving off, mirror being followed now by a light van, vehicles are stationary at the moment now and just moving off very slowly, checking the speed, I'm in first gear, no need for a handbrake here. Vehicles ahead of me are moving off. Mirror, there's a vehicle behind me. I've got to move out. Moving out signal now. There's a van behind. Of course, now to overtake this vehicle. Watching a woman, I think it is, getting into a van. Thank the woman there for waiting for me. Into second gear. Road ahead of me bears around to the left. A road junction on the right. An obelisk in the centre of the road. Keeping away from these stationary vehicles on the near side. Woman is waiting on the near side. Well ahead of me, I see a roundabout sign. Pedestrian crossing. Clear left, centre and offside. Mirror. Not being followed, I'm turning left at this roundabout. A vehicle behind me now, I turn left signal to him. Supplemented by the indicator. Keeping as far into the near side as I can. There's a vehicle parked on the near side, coming to a suburban road, a slight warning to the woman on the left. Coming into now quite a quiet road, a road junction on the right. Mirror, not being followed, into top gear. Getting well away now. Sounds dark perhaps, but it keeps your mind on the job. I must try that. Surprising how much you begin to pick up. It's to see trouble before it hits you. Like that BF who's moving out from the curb. What did I tell you? No signal. Didn't even look in his mirror. Too many of them wear blinkers, if you ask me. What price my free motorist now? Blinkered by her cockeyed mirror. Mrs. Smythe hasn't even noticed. Blinkered by his girlfriend. Blinkered Mr. Jones. It was a good description of them. 
but I had much more to learn from my police driver friend. You want a hazard? See those cars bunching ahead? You know why? Three lanes become two without warning. It's like trying to get a quart into a pint pot. You've got to look ahead these days. You can't afford to daydream, and that's a fact. See that car engine across our bows? What's he up to, do you think? Turning right? Could be. You want a hazard? You've got one. Almost the worst in the book. And now he signals. I wonder who taught him to drive? This is where I dug out. That was by Mr. Jones, with children. It's remarkable. Pass the test, and motorists soon start committing all the sins in the book. Like the double parking here, to pop off shopping. Turning a broad street into a narrow alleyway. Parking on pavements. Hovering to gossip with girlfriends, and slow down the movement on a main road. And if an understandable little hold-up occurs, like this, then getting bad-tempered about it and driving off with a roar. And my Mrs. Smythe is one of those guilty ones. If she'd been pushing the pram on the pavement instead of parking on it and making it impassable, then the copper with his bunch of keys would have been her best friend. Most of the friction between the police and motorists is because they stick to the rules and we break them. We motorists are a rum lot, and we bring most of the trouble on our own heads. But there's one thing we must learn, and learn fast. To avoid accidents. It's no use blaming the road, or the car, or the other driver if we land up in hospital. We have to live with conditions as they are. If they get worse, we have to drive better. How? By learning from the finest road users in the world, the police. And their skill isn't just chance. Listen for a moment to Assistant Commissioner Way. It takes many years to make a first-class police driver. Losing his L plate is only a beginning. He is still very much a learner. Months of practice in car control, reading the road, and experience of driving by day and night, and in all weathers, are needed to acquire road sense. That ability to see and meet an emergency almost before it happens. Every motorist should aim at becoming a safe driver, and he or she will only succeed by overcoming two deadly faults, impatience and inattention. That is why police instruction stresses the importance of concentration and constantly thinking ahead toward the next move. It's not easy, it's a challenge. It has to become second nature. Now, you know, everyone thinks he's a good driver. Well, why not prove it? by avoiding all those accidents which are so frequently due to impatience, inattention, and sheer bad road manners. You and you alone can bring about an improvement because you're in charge of your vehicle. When you're behind the wheel, the future belongs to you. Please see to it that you're really fit to accept that responsibility. If only my Mr. Man in Charge Jones could always drive as though he thought a police driver was watching him. Watching him overtake, for instance, safely and considerately. Mirror. Indicator and hand signal. And although, like many drivers, he's not using his gears enough, he's away. He could never be a fast driver. But with someone ahead slower than himself, on a supremely clear road, he overtakes and he has lane discipline. Not bad at all. Believe it or not, this would be young Robinson if he were really responsible about being in charge. Still a fast driver, but also a considerate one. Just watch him a moment. In a hurry, but driving safely. About to overtake. Mirror, indicator and hand signal. And not too close behind, so he can't see what's coming the other way. Holding in by the second lorry for the roundabout ahead. Keeping his eye on the mirror still, and a good gear check. And holding steady. 
He's really learning car control. And my dear Mrs. Smythe, in charge amid plenty of town traffic hazards. Slowing down for something. A zebra crossing. Away, and neatly through her gear changes. Turning left, and handling the steering wheel properly. Keeping a constant eye on the mirror, gear change. Mirror again. She's really reading the road. Even my police driver friend couldn't do it better. What they can do, so can you. As it says in Roadcraft, the theory that a good driver drives automatically is a fallacy. To the uninitiated, he may appear to do so. But the truth is that by continually concentrating and thinking, he's raised driving to an art. Every corner, bend, gear change, in fact, every driving operation is a problem, which, like every other problem, can only be solved by thinking. You are the man in charge. Never forget that for one moment. 11 o'clock. Ah, Miss Curzon. The next hour is going to be a great pleasure. <laughs>